What's happening, weirdos? This is the return of Rain Wilson, who is incredible, an incredible actor, an incredible person, and an incredible author whose new book, Soul Boom, Why We Need a Spiritual Revolution, is out now, and it is incredible. Let's listen, let's, let's listen in for a little taste of what's to come. I want you to say, look in the mirror and say, I yeah. am enough. Yeah. Can you do that, Pete Holmes? Yeah. That's great. I am enough, though. I understand why you couldn't. Because you're not enough. Yeah, I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) Only a couple things to plug up top before we get back to that wonderful episode. Uh, This wonderful episode. I am currently touring. If you want to come see me, I will be in Milwaukee this weekend. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin, although I believe that's sold out. Thank you, Madison. Go to PeteHolmes.com. Whenever you hear this, if I'm touring, which I am currently, uh, you will see easy links to the tickets there. Easy links, the official link of buying tickets to my show. Go to PeteHolmes.com. I'm very proud of this hour. Uh, Super excited for you guys to see it. And we're about to film it too. So it'll be out soon. But see it live. See it live. See it live. It's so much better live. Uh, but you can, you know, you have a say, you shape it. If you laugh, you you respond, you're kind of a co-creator of the hour, and then you get to see it on your TV and go like, I was there when that joke was uh, different. <laughs> uh, hope to see you out on the road. Um, also, what else do I have to plug? Just one thing, which is our friends at The Perfect Gene. I'm also wearing, look at this, if you're watching the video, The Perfect Gene now makes the perfect hoodie. I'm wearing the best fitting, best looking, best feeling hoodie, and it's from our friends at The Perfect Gene. They also have new washes. So if you've heard me do this ad a bunch of times, listen again for the first time. They're now doing khakis, khaki perfect jeans. They're doing a lighter wash. Well, I won't stand up, but I'm wearing them right now. It's like a a lighter blue, which is now my new favorite pair. They last so long. If you don't know, they're so comfortable. They're 2% spandex, 2.5% rayon, which means they stretch so your nuts ain't crushed. I love wearing soft pants, but I couldn't find any that looked good. The Perfect Jean look like designer, expensive, incredible, high-end fashion, but they stretch and bend like their yoga pants. It's so cool. You could sleep in them. They're that comfortable. You can feel like Sting, but look like a regular human. (laughs) They're the only uh, pants I wear for real. I give them to our guests, give out links to them. We sent a link to Neil deGrasse Tyson. I can't wait. I hope you get some because you need to be comfortable when you're when you're exploring the expanses of space and you got to spare your nuts. The perfect gene for the perfectly imperfect men and now the perfect hoodie and also the perfect khaki. 20% off when you use code weirdo at checkout. Liberate your lower limbs with the one and only perfect gene. Whether you're working with lemons or lentils, a big three leaf clover or a honk and eggplant, the perfect gene's got you covered. Take a peek at peak. Not a P, take a peek at theperfectgene.nyc. That's theperfectgen.nyc and use code WEIRDO for 20% off at checkout. Feel great, look great, and support this show. All right, everybody. Hope to see you on the road. Go to pedohomes.com. Enjoy this chat. Check out Soul Boom. It's Rain Wilson Returns. Get into it. In my life, be my friend. You're debonair and oh so dreamy. You You are more handsome than the characters you play. They have to dress you down (laughs) and make your hair (laughs) real weird. Because in real life, you're a dreamboat, dreamboat, a motherfucking dreamboat. Look at you. You look like an... You look, is this because you're an author? Because you look like a, let's get comfy. I wore my ar- author cardigan. Arthur? My author cardigan. You were on the Arthur. I played Arth- the character of Arthur. <laughs> on the Arthur? On uh, Six Feet Under, was my character was Arthur. <laughs> I've been trying to make Arthas work for a while. It's not. Arthas? You were on NBC's The Arthas. Yes. And you played Arthur. 
And I played Arthur. And yeah. you're the founder of um, Soul Cycle. <laughs> I know you. Let's just talk about how your is feet this okay? are uncomfortably close to me. This is not how podcasts work, isn't it? You don't do this on camel. I could cancel you right now, motherfucker. I felt a. Uh, Wait, I can't even make that joke. I was going to say, like, I just felt that you were okay with it, but that's not I'm true. I'm totally okay with it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I... It should be very fresh. You look, I'm sorry, but you, I want to paint you right now. Let you, you can sketch me. I won't let you paint me. That would take too long. But if you want to sketch me, well, that's I'll fine. Well, I'll sketch you, then you can go home. What's, sorry, what's your name? Katie. Katie, Katie do you have a, 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 a draw pad, a sketch pad? And then, <laughs> so, I was going to Some something. charcoal? I thought it was going to be something. That'd be great. These are for you. If you want, this is Magic Mind. They are a sponsor, but I truly love them. It went, I love them. And then, but you drink it. I want, Does it have I want CBD to, in it? Nope. Does it have caffeine in it? Just 35. That's like a weak cup of tea. 35 milligrams of caffeine. That's, that's strong. No, it's tiny. For me, I'm very caffeine sensitive. Okay, well, maybe. I used to be a caffeine addict among all my addictions. I used to literally be a caffeine addict and i went on a meditate stop I'm gonna open it i can do it myself it's i am because, a big boy it's because you're almost 60 you don't want me to open it for you wow it's because you're nearer to the grave wow like when you were in your 20s you would <laughs> <laughs> you i thought humility made it weird one of the, you made it was weird. one of the 10 one of the 10 tenants uh, ten tenants. Okay, but what did you just say? Which part? The, what are the last two words you just said? Ten tenants. Right. That's not the right word. Ten principles. Ten. Tenants. What I say? Tenants. Tenants rent a house. <gasps> tenants are principles. I There's love no this. statute. Statute of limitations. Not statue of limitations. And it's not intensive purposes. I'm just joining you in things that it's fun also, to, to correct people on. What's the By difference? the way, can I say, yeah, yeah. what's the difference? Pin in that. Love that you corrected me because that's love. That's saying you have a blueberry in your teeth. I say tenants. Yeah. Tenets. Tenets. Thank tenets. you. It drives also, me crazy. It's not. Rainy it's, day. Go ahead. Yeah. Rainy day. It's not espresso. No, it's espresso. And it's not ironic that your flight just took off. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's odd or coincidental or yeah. strange or yeah. surprising. Right. It's not ironic. Right. And it's espresso. Everyone, please, because it's fun to feel classy. Yeah. Espresso. Espresso? Martin Scorsese. I don't know. And uh, regardless and irregardless mean the same thing. Facts. And uh, biweekly, meaning twice a week or every other week. Same word. Wow. It's a are wonder we, we're doing as well as are we, we are. Are we rolling? We really should roll on this. You mean take MDMA? <laughs> I'm rolling, baby. <laughs> uh, uh, what, you were addicted to caffeine. Yes. Have you ever done MDMA? No. Really? Oh, my God. You're going to love it. It's in that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, spiritually no. speaking, as, yeah. as a, you and I, I love- had a, I had a drug phase. Okay. Maybe but, I shouldn't be pitching this to you. But I, yeah, and I don't do drugs because I'm sober, but I didn't do, I didn't do ecstasy or Molly MDMA, whatever that family. I see. And I didn't do heroin. Heroin. And I didn't do any psychedelics. Yikes. So there's a whole category, several touch- categories that I didn't Look, do. Look, this is touchy because you're Sobe Noodles, and I'm somewhat Sobe Noodles. I don't drink anymore. Okay, you're Hollywood sober? I'm Cali sober, yeah. Yeah. I'll occasionally do weed, but I definitely will always and forever do psychedelics. And and as a spiritual... It shows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, oh, excuse me while I Krasinski. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> You know, I make that joke even when you're not here. I say, excuse me, you while do, I Krasinski. Like, do you really? He's, yeah. a, he's great at it. It's not yeah. even, can you close the door, Katie? We got some. You would have been a great uh, if, like if brother say, of Jim with with some kind of mental issues. It started issues, nice. Developmental started, issues. You could started, have been Jim's. Nice. Krasinski and I have fan overlap. That was one of the first things I noticed was people that like John Krasinski also tended to like me when I was maybe when I was younger. They like tall, 
white yeah, guys with sweeping hair. Swoopy. Yeah, I got I got the or like sees one, two, three, uh, Jim Pokies. Yeah. Does that Pokemons? Poke. Health also, hurts. it's Pokemon, not Poke. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's Poke Bowl. Do we want to have a sustained conversation about I any want, topic? Do we want to talk about caffeine? I want to talk about addiction. Okay. I love talking about addiction, but okay. here's the the nickel and the pickle. How are we going to get it out without pickle hands? You know what I mean? You're sober, and the most we both wrote books about. Literally, both you and I on our press tours for our books about spirituality use the phrase "We've thrown out the baby with the bath." That was like. The cornerstone of my yeah no it's a great word. I threw out the spiritual baby with the religious bathwater. I used to say, used to say we I threw say. baby Jesus out with the bathwater just to kind of yeah be funny yeah because of all the deities only ah. one was really famous as a baby right maybe Krishna but you see what I'm saying yeah but what brought me back the infant of Prague huh the infant of Prague I know what you said <laughs> look look it up. There is a saint that isn't, you go to Prague and there's all these babies everywhere and mm -hmm. little statuary of this little baby holding a Holy Roman rattle. It's the infant of Prague. I Holy don't know. Roman rattle, the Kings of Leon song. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Roman rattle. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, so he's a deity? Yeah, the infant of Prague. I don't know what his magic powers are, but okay, I we're imagine it's floating some. and yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me put this nickel in the pickle back back again because I took it out and I okay. it's sweet pickles, bread and butter. Spiritual baby with the religious bath. Water. What I'm saying is, you and I are uh, soldiers for Christ. I'm going to say, no, you and I are on the same page. Yeah. Meaning, hey, everybody, there's something that we've lost big time. Yeah. And I love your book, and you're making the case that like depression and 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 meaninglessness and purposelessness is is not just like an idea. It has real life ramifications yeah. on our lives today. Correct. Like what we, how you feel today, how you live, everything. And it goes back to these meaning making yeah. systems. Now, here's the nickel and the pickle. I came back to mine because I took uh, psilocybin. That's interesting to me. Does it tickle your nickel? Well, I have a section. Here's my unpopular opinion of the day where I, my opinion runs a hundred percent contrary to contemporary thought, especially in secular urban America. Sorry, I we think have to go to the mid rolls. <sighs> the perfect gene. They're so stretchy. <laughs> the perfect gene at NYC. Can you just give me one second? Go ahead. Well, how do you run? How do you run a, uh, away from the popular? Um, you think psychedelics I, are dumb? I I think psychedelics are dumb. You've never done them. Right. That would be like, I'd be like, uh, strawberries okay. taste like bullshit and okay. I've never had a strawberry. That's, but that's, that's not what I'm talking about because I can, oh, did you feel I don't have to do. Guess? I want you to feel safe and supported. I, I don't feel like I have to. <laughs> I've, I see how the podcast works now. I just need to start talking and you're going to talk and I'm just going to just keep I'm, talking. I'm not Reza Aslan, baby. I got a lot to say. <laughs> you do. I got a lot to say. I'm going to say it. No, I just want to no, make but, sure but, you but, feel supported and safe. This is a safe place. Uh, it doesn't it, matter if it's safe or not. I, do, I like that. I, I don't need safe spaces. Oh, I'm sorry. And are you that Idris Elba character where he had those guns and he loads them real fast? Because you're smooth as fucking silk. Baby. I don't. I don't know what that nobody character does. Is. Stephen King made it. Keep going. Wow. Okay. So, oh yeah, the gunslinger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. No, I. I don't have to have done something to know that it's a bad idea. Do you know what I mean? There, there. That the world doesn't work that way. So here's my issue. When I was a kid in the '70s. My uncles, along with a lot of people that I met, were in the uh, Andy Ro Rooney, Andy Leary, Warhol. Timothy Leary, yeah. you know, drop in, tune out, LSD will change your life yeah. mode. And that went on for a long, I'm young, I'm old enough to remember that because I'm almost 60. So uh, then in the 80s, my friends were doing like peyote. And then it was like mushrooms and mush. Hey, we're going to do mushrooms. It's going to change your life. And what were you saying to all these invitations? I, I just wasn't, I was too scared to do psychedelics because I thought I would lose control and yeah. poop my pants. And, and my, my best friend, John did it and saw demons and was sobbing and shit himself in the, in, on, on Tom, in Thompson Square Park in New York City and saw the, the face of the devil for hours and was sobbing and shit himself. So I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. Not a good commercial. So, um, you know, but, they bronze those turds. They're still in the park. No kidding. Yeah. yeah the devil turds. But I'm going to put that aside and just say the, the, the new trend toward ayahuasca and ibogaine, et cetera. And this kind of quote unquote plant medicine, which first of all, 
why are psychedelics plant medicine and heroin and cocaine, which come from plants, not plant medicine? It's all drugs. It just affects your brain differently. Let me finish. I think but you asked a question. I think it's a short. <laughs> it's a. It was. I, it was hypothetical. It was just for you. Yeah. <laughs> it was it for was, the viewers. It was throwing a tennis ball in the air to catch it. it was, not, I'll not let to you play answer, tennis. but no, just I, let me finish my point because yeah, the point is, is that it's commercialized and Americanized and very Western to say I'm going to take this weekend off from work. I'm going to fly down to Costa Rica to this resort where there's a shaman who's going to guide me through my ayahuasca journey in the park next to the hotel and I'm going to throw up in a bucket and someone's going to stroke my hair. I'm going to have this experience. And then I got to be back to work selling insurance on Wednesday, but I want enlightenment, but it's got to fit in this four to five day span. Right. To me, that's what I have the problem with. When not traditional ayahuasca is used as part of the ceremonies of a tribe over decades in, in, in its, in connection with the hunt with the seasons, with a, a whole universe and mythology of spirituality. It isn't like shoehorned into someone's work schedule. And that's Aww. very American and commercialized. Co <laughs> and, and it's this consumerist. Just my heart, it's though. consumerist. Doesn't I want God love the businessman that just has the four days? Can't can't God comes to the hungry in the form of yeah, food. But God comes to the businessman in the form of a two day ayahuasca so, ceremony. But you need to the spiritual transformation and inspiration doesn't have to be drug induced and you can spend, you can find 15 minutes every morning to start to undertake that experience. Yes. And you can, there are so many other modalities of finding spiritual transformation and enlightenment other than shoehorning in a psychedelic experience well, over a weekend. Why shut that one out? Because, because because it's it's I understand for you it's but no why it's superficial a superficial man. and consumerist it's material it's a material you're yeah. eating a material yeah but so, there's this expression in India they go when they saw everything happening in the 60s and 70s with psychedelics they were like God it's a materialist nation so God came to you as a material that's like God comes to the hungry in the form of food I'm just saying like people come to God a lot of different ways yeah how many that, well, we could talk about that. That's an HMB. It'll keep what your, does that mean? Keep your muscle mass important at your age. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Katie <laughs> smiled at that one. Even. It's, it's just kidding. Like, wow. <laughs> I, va I value your opinion. I think it's great. And we're talking about a hypothetical businessman. I guess... Obviously, I'll be. A, there's a little bit of a, a defensiveness on my part because I'm like, I started meditating after I had a, a psychedelic experience, and that's because I had a psychedelic experience was because I realized that there's such a thing as something ineffable, meaning the transcendent. But you have this. But didn't you have that when you were in the church? Didn't you find that in I, I, church I, camp? I stif and I stifled a laugh. No. You did not. Absolutely. You didn't not. have a transcendent spiritual experience in all of the church camps and and choir sessions and service projects that you undertook in your teenage years and early 20s? No, absolutely I read not. his book. You did? Yeah, I read your Could book. Could you say it to camera, please? This is your Krasinski. Comedy Sex God. <laughs> I, read, I read Comedy Sex God. And I first survived. first came out, and I loved it. Oh. It inspired me. Well, you're beautiful, and I love your book. And I, I, I guess this is weird. Maybe I have an issue with conflict, but I'm just saying... It's a big, it's a big party. It's like Jesus says, my, my father's mansion has many rooms. You know what I mean? I'm like, some people come to God by doing heroin, hitting a bottom, getting broken, getting shattered and getting rebuilt. Talk to the alcoholics. That was a horrible experience. And, and it, it brought so them everyone, to their if needs. you're watching at home, try heroin. If you haven't found God hit bottom. Well, I guess what I'm drink yourself into oblivion. What I'm bristling at is that God and spirit is only pursuing you. If you get on your mat for 30 minutes every morning, here's, 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 uh, it's in comedy. Here's my problem. It's in traffic. There's no shortcuts. And I think a lot of people who do psychedelics are looking for a shortcut. And I just, I don't buy that. I don't get with that. It's a long cut. It's a life choice and you don't need chemicals to do it. That's all. It's a, I told you, it's a really unpopular opinion. No, you are completely in the realm of the Joe Roganification of the American male in their thirties, <laughs> forties. I'm in my, I'm 44. Uh, 
Now you can make your jokes. 44 is, I, I, you I, wish. I would give my left leg to be 44 again. But then you'd be, I guess you'd be hopping around. I would around. hop around in yeah. my 40s yeah. and feel fucking great. Yeah. No, I like my 40s. So it's a really unpopular opinion. I understand that in the comments of I the guess YouTube I'm channel, to... it's gonna, I'm going to get lambasted for it. No, but you won't. That's, I, There's a lot of people that agree with you. I don't Brian, think there are. Brian Morarescu, who wrote The Immortality Key, which is about the, the psychedelic origins of all faiths, going back to Eleusis, in Greece, you've heard of this? Mm -hmm, sure. He hasn't done psychedelics. He, he doesn't, he's not interested. He finds his transcendent fix in other ways. The trick is like, it's a long and cold and dark night. Let's take not just psychedelics. I think God is looking for us. Do you see the power move? Mm -hmm, that was good. When you're writing, when you were writing your book, you had to feel that that flow and that connection. When you were merging in an ensemble like The Office, like I'm just saying, why put up any fence post? And and what I'm bristling at is God comes to the good, the disciplined, the worthy, the people that go. This is a, a long haul. I'm actually think the way that I but see that's it. Not, that's not that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about capitalism. I'm talking about here is a convenient, superficial shortcut where I can take this amount of time off of my schedule, go plug in to have this spiritual experience. And to me, it's very American and it's it very- is. and God met us there. Yeah, but I, to me, that's the part of America and Western culture that I, I find revulsion in. I agree. So, it's grotesque. Because it's consumerist and, isn't and it superficial beautiful? and I want to buy this experience. And we can't stop falling upward, Rain. I'm not even saying just psychedelics. I'm saying we're all full of shit. I have that, that humbling with my practice all the time that I kid myself that I'm coming to God because I desire the truth. How much of me just doesn't want to get hurt? How much of me just doesn't want to be wrong? How much of me doesn't want to be a fool or go to some old school Looney Tunes hell? There's so much self-service and God doesn't say, you know what? This is pretty oh, capitalistic. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying God is judging people that do psychedelics. I think you're, you're, I'm just saying that culturally we're not having this, con we're only now having this conversation. This conversation isn't being had out there about yeah. the short-term consumerist mindset of I'm going to buy a resort weekend transcendent experience. That conversation needs to be had. I don't think God is judging you or anyone who does ayahuasca or has a trip and opens doors in their so brain. So why aren't we imitating that? Why aren't we imitating that? That's not, that's not human. I have strong opinions about right and wrong and ways to do things. And that also might rub people the wrong way. I think that, for instance, I think, I think morality is a thing. Yeah. In, in contemporary American culture, morality is a dirty word. People yeah. don't want to talk about morality. Like the idea that there's a, a right and wrong that might come from a place other than what's societally, socially agreed upon yeah. is, is an anathema to kind of liberal values, to Marxist postmodern values, certainly. And I'm a little bit with Jordan Peterson on the whole idea of morality, oh, which, wow. um, so, you know, I have strong, <laughs> you, can, you can say that. Do you have my face I, sewn in the inside of your jacket? Remember when he was on Rogan, he was like, I have your face, Joel, I have your face sewn on the inside of my jacket. I, I was didn't like, see that. why didn't we talk about that for 20 yeah. minutes? Jordan's yeah. just going around with comedian faces. I have huge problems with him. And now he's holding off. He's lecturing people on climate change. And like going contrary to like science and climate change. And it's like, well, what about CO2? It's increased CO2 all over the world because of climate change. Because plants are healthier, but no one's studying that. Like, dude. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I, I can't even, I'm not sitting that out because it's not popular to talk about Jordan Peterson and have an opinion. I'm just, that's out of my depth. But I think, but I think where we differ here is that one plants stakes about what is and what isn't acceptable to oneself. And one can also criticize contemporary culture and society. I'm not seeking to emulate God who is all forgiving, all loving and all accepting of everyone. I have issues with lots of things. I have issues with materialism and, and, and capitalism and consumerism, yeah. right? And how that reflects in like goop right? As a, as a phenomenon, right? And how it reflects in kind of new age people and how new agey 
people kind of try and find transcendence that I find very narcissistic and navel, navel gazing. Mm-hmm. So I have judgments and yeah. I'm not, I would never meet a new age person or someone who had done psychedelics and say, I'm condemning you or I'm judging you or I'm looking down on you. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I do think that there are, we should strive to find ever more pure and ever more enlightened paths towards being better and better people and building a better and better culture. We'll get to that. That's interesting. That's, I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. What I was going to interrupt you and you, and you skillfully didn't allow me. Hey, you're also wearing Bombas. Told you, but you know what? I just thought you I liked my Bombas. This morning. I, uh, you put them in I backwards. Them up, and I was like, what the hell? Like, does it really matter? Those are, those are Sam Moss. Sab Moss. Oh, you know the, you know the Bombas colors? Those are, but that's Bombas backwards. Sand moss. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were saying it's sand moss. Yeah, was no, the no, greenish no. color no, no, no. of the sock. No, no. And all our Bombas got mixed up, so I'm very often wearing one of mine and one of Val's. I guess what I'm saying is... Val is his dead mother. <laughs> I love... It's like the Vanessa, um, Vanessa Bear. I love that for you. And also, I love the business guy who fucking sucks because we're making him up. We can make him as, as much as we want. He's, I know, I know he's a guy. Robin I, have someone Williams. In, I have someone in my mind. I'm saying he's Robin Williams in the first act of Hook. He's a yuppie. He doesn't like his kids and he doesn't have time for God. How? I'm, I, I guess I'm just like, Jesus has this line where he says, if you're not, he actually says both. He says, if you're not for us, you're against us. But he says, if you're not against us, you're for us. It's in two different gospels. He contradicts himself. But I'm saying like this little willingness of the businessman, which actually ends up being greater than he even intended going to this thing. And I know you haven't done, I haven't done ayahuasca either, but from everyone I've talked to, it's a real walnut cracking. It's not an escapist drug. It's a, it's a confrontational experience over that you do it over three days and it, breaks you and and you need guidance and you need to be reintegrated and stuff so this guy sure maybe he is just like a dot com or an entrepreneur that's with the trend and that's groovy like like succession he's uh gojo he's the gojo guy yeah i'm just the reason i'm nudging you towards just a loving acceptance of that person's tiny flicker of their internal flame it's almost gone in virtual reality porn and cocaine and whatever it is, however awful this person is, but there's this tiny flicker and, and even not his conscious mind goes, I'll do ayahuasca. There's something deeper in him. You could say his soul that is going like, fuck yeah, we're going to have this motherfucker for four days. We're going to get at him. That's what I'm saying. God came to us as a material. God comes to us as a conversation. God comes to us you know, I've had religious experiences doing nightclub comedy, talking about jizz and shit. And I'm like, that, the, so let me just stick the landing. The reason I'm nudging you towards that is if I judge that guy, I really do feel like I'm judging So I don't myself. judge that guy. Yeah. I don't judge that guy. And this is the difference. Is like, I have dozens of friends that have done ayahuasca and, and psychedelics and had transformative experience. And I just hug them and I'm like, fucking, that's great, man. Good for you. I love you. That's amazing. Tell me about it. What did you learn? That's amazing. Right. So here's the difference is how do we have, like, I don't have any judgment of any individuals that have taken that path. I'm just saying collectively for decades, we have thought of psychedelics as a portal to a kind of a, a a shortcut to spiritual enlightenment. And it hasn't really worked. It hasn't really been working. And I actually know some relatives and some friends who, uh, through microdosing or, or, or dependency, um, fried their brains and fucked themselves up. Yeah. And so there's, there's, there's some, there's some perils there that aren't really discussed. Underreported. I agree. It's, it's underreported the addiction issues around it. Paul Simon wrote about it in his biography, which is excellent, he had Iwa- he snuck and stole and grew his own ayahuasca and was like taking it daily. And he talked about how he had a dependency issue and he regrets wow. it and he, wow. he took it away from its kind of sacredness. Yeah. So 
I would never judge someone individually, but I do think collectively I'm just asking us Americans to strive for more than anything as a, as a shortcut. And for me, I've had spiritual experiences on stage. I've had, uh, in, in acting, uh, absolutely. I think through art in nature. Um, and, and, and frankly, I struggle to have them in my daily life in Los Angeles and I struggle and I'm not very spiritual most of the time. Yeah. I have to meditate and do cold plunges and exercise uh, and journal and make calls uh, to my 12-step brothers. I have to do that on a daily basis just to get to kind of functional. I understand. So it's, I don't, I'm not arrived you know, Julia Cameron once said, I come to spirituality not out of virtue, but out of necessity. So for me, because of addiction, mental health issues, whatever, I needed to find a spiritual path, a long-term spiritual path to kind of keep me moving in the right direction. I am not holier or more arrived or awakened. Buddha is the awakened one. I'm not more awakened than, than anyone else. It's just, I, it gets me to functional. I hear that. Yeah, I was wondering what the, that was one of the questions I scrawled here. I'll, I'll give a tease. You don't want to look at that. I'm just kidding. It just says one kid, Galaxy Quest, Nicaragua, <laughs> dad. That's all it says. Good. Um, because you've done the show before. I, we covered the basics. Yes. You know, so I was just kind of looking for things we haven't talked about. But I was drawn to religion or spirit, really religion, um, which led to spirituality. Um, but because there was so there was no uh, my household was a little tumultuous it, it, it was a it was a tropical zone a lot of, a lot of storms and a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. and I loved that church was a place where people were under a code a creed to be kind yeah that's one of your tenets yep is compassion yeah. and kindness yeah so before we launch off the deep end and I do want to talk to you about non-duality and and how that kind of applies to some of the mm. things because that was one of the just to tease where i think we'll go that was one of the perspectives that wasn't really represented in the book that i found was vedanta but before we get to that i went to that's church. the whole ending of the book is it yeah it's the whole that's how i end i stick the landing on, on vedanta. vedanta really yeah that we're the illusion of separateness oh well then i can't wait to talk about it i love it it's right juicy. after these minerals you see how I can stretch these jeans so easily? These are called the perfect jean. Those are corduroys and they can't. They, they're stretchy they're corduroy. Gonna, they're going to rip. We're going to, he's going to be canceled for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I loved going to a place where, where kindness was like a, an agreed upon communal quality. Obviously not everybody did it all of the time, but it was a safe place. It was one of the first places I performed. Mm -hmm. And I just liked that everybody defaulted to listening, yep. sharing, mm -hmm. honesty, mm -hmm. caring, kindness, yeah. helpfulness. You could use a little more of that as a podcast host. All right, Grandpa. Frankly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. So tell me, so for me, it was a, yeah. a feeling of a lack of control in my, in my house. Mm -hmm. My parents did the best they could, but I was like, these people don't like each other. I wrote in my book that they were like Greek gods throwing lightning bolts. Yeah. You can't just go, two grownups are having an altercation. You're like, the world is ending. So I really craved my youth pastor. Like, I loved him. Yeah. He was so cool. Yeah. And the regular pastor, I just loved all that. So psychologically, that is sort of what drew me in those doors. And then I also was, as I said in my own book, a real what is this kid? I was going around going like, what is water? I know hydrogen and oxygen, but like, what is hydrogen and what is oxygen? Like, how deep can we go? How far out can we go? Like, what is this? And and what is it that knows what this is? Like, isn't that crazy that there's an awareness that can hear you and- Consciousness, yeah. yeah. Mm. People talk about how the ear works and they talk about a little bit of liquid and a crystal. And I'm like, but what hears it? I know what <laughs> filters the sound and gives it to the yeah, brain, yeah. but what in the brain goes, rain is here. Yeah. Fucking crazy. So I've always been that kind of kid. Yeah. Tell me the kind of kid you were. What what brought you into Bahai? Bahai? 
La, 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 la. Um, <laughs> that's that... called uvulating. Did you know uvulating? that? Uvulating? La, 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 la. I love that. I know the term uvula from King's Quest Three, where you get swallowed by a, a whale, and if you have a, a feather in your inventory, you, you tickle a uvula. You and go he spits up and you, you, up? you have to type tickle uvula, but the game teaches you what a uvula is. Oh, that's Because you go like tickle whale, and it, it goes like where. So you said something in that really beautiful share that you had that uh, here's another really unpopular opinion because uh, this is an unsafe space. Um, you said my parents did the best they could. And people always say that about their parents, like their parents did the best they could. And then, but I, I want to just push back on that a little bit before I, I get it. into that. This like, is fun. Why, is that true? Because I know my parents and I think back of my <laughs> parents <laughs> and they were, and they were pretty terrible parents all around. My mom left when I was a year and a half. My dad um, was not good at intimacy. I check off dad on the um, list. Yeah. <laughs> dad. dad. Got it. Um, not good at intimacy. My stepmom, same. And uh, they were in a terrible, loveless marriage. They knew it was a loveless marriage from the get-go. Yep. They would fight and rage and break she would break dishes in the sink and stomp off and slam doors. And Hard on you. Worse on those dishes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and people always say they did the best they can. I know in my life, Pete, I have not always done the best that I could. I know that there have been junctures in my life where I could have done better. Existent uh, I, not existential, but just like a philosophical question. If that's what you did, wasn't that kind of the, the best you could do? Meaning it's what you did. Meaning there were unseen psychological and circumstantial and maybe even environmental forces that stopped you from Tony Robbinsing it and being like, you know what? Well, we sure. are going to the library. So yeah. isn't everything we do kind of by definition? It's like saying God's will. If it happened, it was God's will. That's that's what God's will is. You can say if we that, did it, that was as good as we could do. Isn't that kind of a cop out? Isn't it kind of Absolutely. like? Absolutely. I'm not here to like, cop we're on. Just, just, I, what do we want to fault each yeah, other? I, but th then why do anything? Why make that's any choice question. and why why yes, get why better? do anything and so just because hey this is it's god's will and i'm going to take a poop in the corner and then i'm going to i think side that, swipe someone's car and not tell anyone about it and it's okay that was and i'm you? just you know what i mean yeah that was me is that your uh was gray, it, gray prius outside it, it was now it's a gray yeah. prius with a racing stripe no, but I, you know, this is this is why I said it's an unpopular opinion because the popular opinion is like ev everything in the past is forgiveness. We did the best we could, and it's like I really wish I had done better at certain points in my life, and that's how I learn. And so it is a, a positive uh, aspect of being a human being that I I move forward, and then I make I hopefully try and make better and better choices. See, although that always like, haven't been the case. These feel like life strategies for good living of Earth human lives because mm -hmm. we're talking about forgiveness. It's on a. It's on that post-it. I always reference it, but uh, Father Greg Boyle, when he did this podcast, said, forgiveness is overrated. Give me mercy. Mm -hmm. So when we look at our parents sucking it up, and believe mm -hmm. me, I'm talk about the Enneagram. I'm, a, I'm an Enneagram four, split down the middle with a three, but four is love talking about their pain and moping and all, all artists and, you know, weirdos. I don't are, know my Enneagram. I want to figure it out. Maybe anyway, you're five um, or seven. Um, so mercy versus <laughs> forgiveness. Forgiveness goes, I acknowledge right. that my parents could have done better, but I'm going to let that go. Mercy well, just goes like, what is happening here? We're in God's dream. Right, but I'm like, not, why are we even replaying the archives? <laughs> let it go. Yeah. Because, see, see, because the, I think that um, the only way out is through, and I had to do a lot of therapy work about my resentment at my parents and the trauma that I suffered at their hands in order to be free of it. Yeah. And now I hold my parents in... My father who's passed, my stepmom and my mom are still alive. I hold them in such love and in such mercy. And because we're all, you did that work. Because I did that work yeah. and we're all seated in the palm of God's grace and surrounded by light and that's so beautiful and God bless them. I don't think they did the best they could. I think they could have done better and I wish they had. But if they could have done better, wouldn't they have done better? No. Why not? Because I know that for myself, there's, I've had many times in my life where I've had two very clear roads like – Here's the better path, Rain. You could just have a little more effort and you could go down there or you could just settle for that you same old behavior that has proven false before and wrong before and steered you off course before. And, yeah, I'm just going to settle for that. Because you couldn't. No, I could have. You, But you didn't. And I didn't. Then you couldn't. I could have and I then didn't. Then why didn't you? Because we have free will. 
We have free will. I agree, but I'm also saying we're not we're not just buffeted like, about like feathers in the wind stream. Let's get up and jog. So that moment where you don't get up and jog, yeah, baby, we're having a good chat. That those was good. those you those, want me to talk those about, nootropics. Uh, yeah, to camera camera magic mind magic mind dot co slash weird. It's got Focus a, more, stress it's less. It's got adoptogens in it. That's not a thing. Adaptogens hey, are a thing. There's adoptogens are not a thing. They That's help made you up. adapt. It's in the name. Did you get this from Gwyneth Paltrow? You shit on goop twice, my friend, and I will fight you with there's a fencing more. sword. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm saying you want to get up and jog tomorrow. You get up and you go, this bed's too comfy. I'm saying that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's all of this stuff underneath the real reason why you don't get up to jog. Uh, what are we even doing here? We die one day. My dad was uh, emotionally unavailable. I'm hungry. I'm weak. I didn't get the nutrition. I, why did I eat that? So you couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't or you would have. You couldn't. Mercy. Yeah, I just, I, don't, I just don't see it that way. I see exactly what you're saying, and I think it's a cop-out. It I, is a cop out. Yeah. Why do we want to cop on? I want to cop on because like, I want to be a better person. Nonsense. I, and I be a better and I, person. And I am by, a better. I'm by, a better person. Out. I'm a better person than I was ten years ago, and I'm a better person than I was twenty years ago. I hear that. And this I, is from choices that I've made and work that I've done over the long haul. And I'm not just a, a leaf were being able blown to. about. Because you were able to. Those times you made the right yeah. choice, you were it's able interesting. to. interesting. What do you think, listeners? I'd love to hear from you. Let's see in the um, comments. His anti-psychedelic stance, <laughs> magic mind. I, told, I have a lot more unpopular opinions. I love your unpopular opinions. Mm-hmm. And I'm also loving this zesty conversation. But I, 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 let's go back to your original question. For yeah. me, I, I, I love what you shared. Um, so I grew up a member of the Baha'i faith. I grew up that way. And what was what has been difficult for me to wrap my head around and has been a lifetime of kind of praying, meditating, journaling, therapizing about is the fact that the Baha'i faith is all about universal love and unity and acceptance of all the faith traditions and healing racism and sexism and income inequality through spiritual tools, um, many of which I bring up in my book, Soul Boom, Why We Need a Spiritual Revolution. I'll talk about it if Pete won't. Um, I'll say it in the intro. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I, you know, you know, I just... How is that but, knee, by the way? Um, <laughs> I've always had these really knobby... Those aren't knee. knobby. That's knobby. That's a little knobby. That's knobby AF. Can I say As something? I say that. I think it looks great. Thanks. So for me, what was difficult... Or what was interesting was uh, what was traumatic, and it was kind of a spirit. And a lot of people have religious trauma, right? And people, and this is part of why we've thrown the spiritual baby out with the religious bathwater, is that people have religious trauma. I was doing a movie with this director uh, who's passed away, Roger Michelle, brilliant director in England, and he's like, "So I understand that you believe in God, and and in." you have a religious faith and spirituality. And I'm like, yes. And he goes, I don't. And I was like, oh, Roger, why is that? And he's like, well, every day I was dragged to mass and I had to fold the outfits and I had to light the incense and I had to mop the locker room. And I, I don't know, you know, whatever kids do at mass. And my parents would drag me there five days a week. I never believe in any of that. It's like, and he was unable to see that his religious trauma had then trumped that whether or not his parents dragged him into mass has nothing to do with the fact of whether there is a God or not, right? There's zero correlation between those two things. Right. And even him, as brilliant as he was, he was unable to see that, that, that there was a distinction between the two. So my religious trauma, my specific one, was my parents being in an unhappy, loveless marriage filled with fighting and, and desperately and deeply believing in a faith that's all about love and acceptance, acceptance and healing and unity so there was this kind of just giant disconnect between life at home and life as a Baha'i kid singing Kumbaya and I singing along. Is and there, I think a lot yes. of people have had that kind of uh, experience. Trying to walk the line between interrupting, but also just no, please, I'm with please. you. Go, no, tell me. Is there I'm, anything I'm worse? That's my, that's my family's church portrait over your shoulder over there. And it was worse. It kind of gaslighty. Yes, gaslighty to yeah. see the khaki button down version of our family yeah. where we would do an impression of happiness 
and that's so well put. And then go home, and I was it. It, it was a church cliche that you're in the parking lot, and now it's like get the fuck out of you know what I mean, right? And I'm like, what kind of message is this? This is I the remember worst there was message. I remember there was a Baha'i gathering at our house, which they call firesides, where you're like talking about Baha'i spiritual ideas, and there's going to be prayers and some cookies and stuff like that, and my. My stepmom made tea for everyone and set out the cookies and made sure everything was laid out and people were kind of settling. And then she had been really upset about something that happened earlier with my dad, as she often was, stomped across the living room, went, and this was her, always her thing, and went into the bedroom and slammed the door as loud as humanly possible. And there was like one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and my dad was like, Okay, well, shall we settle down and say some prayers and maybe do a meditation? And everyone, please uh, welcome. Thanks. There's cookies. At, and I'm nine years old or eleven years old or whatever. Like, how do you process that? Yeah, buddy. Can I? I'm not projecting onto you. This is me and my addiction. One of the things I liked about booze was it told you what it was. I, I don't mean marketing, like good times at the beach. You want to be slick with the ladies? Have a martini. Not my experience. You know, that's how you go like, hey, it's terrible. But I liked that alcohol went in and did the same thing every time. There was something, I'm, I don't drink alcohol anymore. I don't think it's evil. I'm just saying it's not for me. So this isn't with romantic hindsight. I'm just saying when I when I had experiences where prayer meeting was at our house or whatever it was, and as soon as it was over or before it had started, we're having our own experience of that. Of course I would be drawn to caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, that pretty is pretty consistent and doesn't really yeah. ask much of you. Yeah. This does sound like our sponsor is Anheuser-Busch, but you know what I mean? It's a winnable game. Put this in your mouth and it'll do this to you for right. the most part. Well, um, so my alcohol use was, uh, so you put that, so little boy, me, little boy rain and mom leaves when he's a year and a half to have an affair, blah, blah, blah. I stay with my dad. He gets remarried to, in this unhappy marriage with the stepmom that I described. Little boy rain is in that milieu for a very long time and, uh, grows up with just tremendous anxiety, just like a, a, a shattering anxiety bouncing around like a paint pachinko ball in my chest. And, and then what do I do when I start, when I understand, when I start, I, I don't drink because Baha'is don't drink alcohol, right? Or use drugs. So until I, I don't drink until about 20, 21 and I start drinking and all of a sudden I drink. If I have three beers, my anxiety just goes away. And mm -hmm. like, this is, I didn't know it at the time. I wasn't being conscious about it in that way, but I used alcohol the same way someone would use cough syrup if you've got a cough. I medicated oh, wow. my anxiety pretty effectively for years by using alcohol almost every single night to help me sleep. And it was working until it wasn't working. Right. And so if that's the problem, I think, with drugs and alcohol is they're often used to medicate, soothe, escape the pain of being a human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Food too. You have this, to this feeling porn that, yeah, oh, and sure. distraction on the phone. I would say the guy that climbed El Capitan was also going like, there's some shit I can't feel. I, meaning virtuous things also uh -huh. can be used or, or, or a byproduct of mm. them can also help us not feel things. Also to that I say, I get it. It's a long and strange <laughs> journey and, and we need help. Mm. But when you can't, the question that, that a therapist asked me and, that I try to, it goes, what are you unwilling to feel right now? Like what, mm. what is so, and a really powerful mantra, I know you love spiritual hacks, is if I feel this way the rest of my life, that's okay, is a very powerful mm. brain. It's like pouring yeah. a bottle of water in yeah. your, on your laptop, yeah. just fries it. You're trying to run this anxiety program and you just go, you know what, if I feel this way the rest of my life, that's okay. Yeah. Because as you know, it's that resistance that, that's actually giving it the charge that's giving it right. the ACDC. AC it's, it's what's running the program. Yeah. Yeah. No, and then you go, it's fine. That's really, that's really brilliant and perfect. And I know when, when I was starting the therapeutic process, my therapist was having me say, um, uh, affirmations, positive affirmations. Yeah. And he printed out a list like from the internet. It was just like <laughs> Google. It had the ads on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hit it. And it um, check your Equifax, check your credit <laughs> score. 
and uh, he print and number one on the list was I am enough, and uh, he he handed it to me, and I was like, uh, he was like, read through these. I am enough. Well, I'm not saying that one. He was like, what? It's like, yeah, that's not. He's like, oh, that's the one that you need to say every day, and mm. and it's still one that I struggle with, and I and I am okay in the struggle. Yeah, I'm really okay. Like. Rain, when you wake up in the morning, you're going to struggle with wondering if you are enough just as you are. Mm. And that's okay to just, to just let that be. And, um, and in, in, ex, in acceptance of that struggle, I, I learned that I am, I am enough on a daily basis. We'll but he had me hang it on my bathroom mirror and say it for 30 days every morning. Like literally said, I want you to say, it. look in the mirror and say, I yeah. am enough. Yeah. Can you do that, Pete Holmes? Yeah. That's great. I am enough, though. I understand why you couldn't. Because you're not enough. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Because you're deficient. In... Yeah. Um, I love it. This Mother's Day, I decided to give Val for real something that was way better and lasted way longer than a brunch to say thank you to her for all that she does for our family. We got her her very own electric e-bike because uh, sure, you can do breakfast in bed, but why not instead transform her day-to-day -day errands into fun, carefree mini adventures. And let's be real, what moms really need is a little quality time, a little me time to themselves. And electric e-bikes will take her wherever she wants to go, giving her fun and that craved solitude as a parent, to be honest. We also, got, I got one for myself because, you know, we want to do it as a family and we got the Yep Maxi seat accessory so Leela can come along with us because what we're looking for is something to do as a family that would get us outside and get us moving that was fun enough to keep our four-year-old engaged but also fun enough to get us motivated to get out the door and away from the couch and the TV. But the, the bikes are so comfortable. They're like moving couches. They make errands a breeze and they are so, so fun. It's making us enjoy our neighborhood and nature and fresh air so much and because they're electric you can roam freely and reach up to 28 miles per hour with the twist of a throttle or their next level pedal assist and they cost way less than the competition and are foldable they ship free and come fully assembled it was awesome it was easy there's no looking back we are now electric bike family so celebrate your mom or yourself and give the freedom that comes with electric e-bike or visit, uh, not or, so to do this, not or, <laughs> visit electric, like the word electric without the E, L-E-C-T-R-I-C, ebikes.com to learn more and to explore the epic models electric has to offer. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C, ebikes.com. Yeah, all right, okay. What's next? Our friends at Ritual which is my ritual. <laughs> Why did I say this so weird? I'm sorry. Time out. If supporting found, uh, foundational health was a sport, who would you want on your team? I would choose Ritual. They made a multivitamin for men that's based solely on science and designed to help fill common nutrient gaps in the diet with 10 key nutrients. I used to go to the doctor. It was a normal occurrence that they would just tell me. I was ready for it. Which vitamins I was deficient in. Boom. Ritual fills those gaps. I get a clean 100%. I just had my physical, bam, takes care of it. And they take care of my gut with a pro, uh, probiotic, a prebiotic, and a postbiotic all in one easy to take minty pill. Uh, scientifically developed with, it's a high quality key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. It's uh, made traceable because where your nutrients come from is just as important as what they are for. It's vegan friendly, non-GMO, sugar-free, gluten-free, and major allergen-free. Their capsule has a delayed release. This is key. So many people say, I would take a multivitamin, but you just pee it out. Ritual is delayed release, so it's designed to help make it gentle on an empty stomach, and it doesn't break down until it's in your lower intestine, which helps those vitamins actually get into your body. So it's the only vitamin I've taken that you don't just immediately pee out neon green predator blood and go, well, what was the point of that? It gets into your body with a minty essence in every bottle to keep things fresh and to make 
Taking your multis, fun and an easy new part of your ritual. So Essential for Men is a great multivitamin from a company you can actually trust and get this. Ritual is offering weirdos 10% off during your first three months. So visit ritual.com slash weird to start Ritual or add Essential for Men to your subscription today and try their prebiotic, their postbiotic all in one. Uh, Symbiotic Plus, it's called. Go to ritual.com slash weird. Support your body. Support the show. All right, everybody. Back to Rain Wilson. Yeah, that's... Although, you know, it's funny. No, I'm not going to bring up MDMA again. I'm just saying I, I, the experiences I've had on that, which are only two in my life, but those... They're saying therapeutically that's one of the things that can increase is self-compassion, self-understanding. Mm. And I did it not that long ago, and I had this real... I kept saying to Val, like, I see Pete's gold. I see Pete's gold. Meaning I can be very hard on Pete. Mm. And I, even though I can go, he's enough and stuff. Not hard enough. Boop. Hey, Krasinski, come back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm now a secret agent. <laughs> Isn't he? Krasin? I think he's moved past that. I think he's done with that phase. Is that over? Yeah, Jack oh. Ryan. Yeah. Oh, I'd rather you not say the name of it, but yeah. Here's Tom my Clancy's question. Clancy's Jack Ryan. There we go. Tom's a friend. <laughs> How about Tom Clancy's Tom that. Clancy? Tom Clancy's, even when that guy has an orgasm, he goes, Tom Clancy's <laughs> orgasm! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he gets his breakfast in the morning. <laughs> Tom Clancy's scrambled eggs. Tom Clancy's poop. Take it easy, Splinter Cell. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> needs this. Nobody needs it. Let me ask you this, because maybe it'll tease us to the last chapter of your book, but for me, ethics, even self-love, the underlying issue, meaning I'm kind to you, not because, uh, not even because it, it makes me feel good necessarily or that it's evolutionary wise and good to have friends and alliances. That's all part of Pete's story is why Pete's nice to you. But there's a, when I'm nice to you, it's because I'm trying to remember and recognize who you really are. So sure, Pete is enough Pete, my personality, my ego, but who fucking cares really what I really am is unborn awareness that, mm -hmm. that is timeless. Mm -hmm. We think we're stuck in this thing where we think like, I'm 57. I have had 57 years. Fucking bullshit. Like it's here. It's all mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And we, we tell ourselves stories, longer life, better, shorter life, worse, more pleasure, better, lots of pain, worse. But it's all this, bah, it's all this, bah, it's, it was the whole thing when it's all said and done will have been, bah. And the whole point of it to me mm -hmm. is to recognize who we really are who w, capital W we really are. So when I say I am enough, that's a Rupert Spira book, Meditations on I Am. Fucking blow your dick off. If you don't want to do psychedelics, which I'm with you, just read Rupert Spira. That's, that's what psychedelics are. you suggesting like. for me to blow my dick off. With a big old shotgun. Because it doesn't matter. Bah! Bah! <laughs> you get it? Bah! <laughs> It's like, <laughs> oh, he was strangely <laughs> like Tom a Tom Clancy's penis. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I would love to check that out. Yeah. No, I'm Rupert is that. one of the things yeah. you can read that you actually get yeah. into that transcendent very, very quickly. Yeah. So anyway, all of this is to put it back to you is now if I say I am enough, I'm not even talking about Pete. And that's why I can say, and I can say I am a beloved child of God. That's I'm beautiful. God's treasure. I love that. That's written in. Uh, you know, Jesse Eisenberg social network marker on my mirror. I am God's treasure. Mm. I'm a, I'm a huge believer in the the prodigal son being like everybody goes to the golden rule. I'm like, go to the prodigal son. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. It's you ran away. You think you left God. Yeah. You squandered your inheritance, your soul. Yeah. Your gift. You you, you and you're Jewish and you laid down with the pigs. So you mm. were disgraced. Mm. We can't even really understand how degraded that was, but you were degraded and untouchable and defiled. Mm -hmm. And then you, in humility, kind of like a businessman taking ayahuasca, but in humility, you did what you could and you returned to your father. And mm -hmm. do you remember what the prodigal son's dad says? He says, you were always with me and everything I have is yours. Mm -hmm. Slaughter the fattened calf. And he loves and celebrates the son who left in return more mm -hmm. than, than the, the good son yeah. who stayed. Yeah. That's us. I feel yeah. like that's it. That mm -hmm. was Jesus. Everyone knows I say this. That's Jesus' closer. 
we know he said it. That's like yeah. one of the things. Yeah. I feel like everything else is sort of dicey, mm -hmm. but I feel very confident that the prodigal son is the point. And that's who you are. You got lost in with the pigs thinking you were rain who was not enough in the slot. Oh, how could I be enough? I keep this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And then you, you broken and humiliated. You go home a lot like sobriety, but you're broken. Like the 12 steps, you're, the cost of admission is brokenness, yeah. not Hello, I'm an alcoholic. You're not yeah. proud. You're broken. Yeah. Yeah. You go back. You're waving the white flag. And surprise, yeah. surprise. Yeah. You don't get forgiven. He doesn't say, I know you were with the pigs and I know you wasted all that money that I gave you. There's just mercy. Jesus fucking Christ. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's who you are. Buddha fucking Christ. Baha'u'llah fucking Christ. Muhammad fucking Christ. Rain fucking Christ. Mm -hmm. That's also on my mirror. Christ is in me and where Christ is, God is because Christ yeah. is a part of God. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. I, I, I'm, I'm all for that. And I think for me, I needed to kind of help heal child rain, that anxious kid with the slamming doors and the yelling and the, the mom who abandoned me. I needed to kind of like do some work around that before mm. I was able to kind of engage in the path that you're talking about. But for me, it's about, God. So, and one of the chapters of the book is I call the notorious God, and it's about a complete kind of reinvention of how we think about and talk about God. Yes. So obviously everyone knows God isn't an old man with a white beard on a cloud. Although my friend, although BJ Novak, I did a thing with him and BJ said, wouldn't it be funny if everyone died and we went to heaven and there actually was like an old man with a long white beard. And he's like, hi, I'm God. Like, wait, you're, you're like, the God on the Sistine Chapel. Yeah, that was me. He painted me and this is who I am. Yeah. Um, but, Steve Martin beat him to that premise about oh, he did? 30 years ago. And you tell him I said that, but yeah. I'm going to tell him that. <laughs> he won't, he'll that, know. That's he's hysterical. A, he's a brilliant comedy writer. I don't think he thought, and I'm the first person to say this. Um, but I, yeah. It, it felt like he came up with it on the moment and made me made me howl. Also, but. Kristen Schell did this podcast and said her God is an old man in the sky. Also, George Harrison in that documentary, remember he had his, he was a very spacious and mm. free person and he was like god is not an old man in the sky but god is also an old man in the sky he was like it's both that's the space of paradox i talked about that in my book old he's been around man unfortunately powerful yeah uh in the sky not caught in our drama seeing it from above that's that's why that was a useful metaphor but go on the um the conception of God as uh, a quality like beauty, for instance, or, uh, and I know you've talked about this a lot before and I've heard you speak about it, like God as love that someone asked me, you know, when people say, how do you know you believe in God? It was like, well, I know that I believe in love. I know that I love. I don't have to kind of like go, do I love? And think about, it. is that love that I'm feeling? Like, right. I know that when I held my infant son who almost died during childbirth in the hospital of a Van Nuys, in the hallway of a Van Nuys hospital. I know that feeling is love. There's, and I know that that sensate, that same sensation is the perfect corollary for the divine force that is here with us and in all things. Radical son, father, son. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's going yeah. right to it going, this is as close as you can probably get. I'm yeah. not saying people who don't have kids yeah. don't know, Yeah, but Jesus constantly going my father my father and that was because he was like it's like how you love your kids right it's like how hopefully you were loved by your right parents. right that that's 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 really profound and um so and i think you you spoke before about uh consciousness you know like why do i hear what is the here what is how is that sensation like yeah. to me the miracle of consciousness itself is evidence of of god ishness because I'm in the middle, I, I perceive that I'm in the middle, I'm in the illusion that I am perceiving the middle of a 3D movie that's surround sound of being Rain Wilson experience and having this conversation and drinking these delicious beverages and remembering my childhood and thinking, oh, it's a little cold in here. Why do they have that set to 69? I'm wondering what's going on, but it, the light is really beautiful and I hope I get to see my wife tonight because she was upset the other day and, and this this incredible mm. way of being, we don't need to have as human beings. From the materialist point of view, 
uh, the only consciousness that we would need to propagate the species is one slightly above gorilla. Yeah. And we don't need to have poetry and haiku and reminiscences and tears of joy and uh, and operas and Radiohead and all of the yeah. stuff that makes us human beings. So when I think about beauty itself as a concept being closer to God than any kind of beingness, you know, David Bentley Hart, the famous theologian, uh, talks about like God God as a being among other beings is the kind of the first thing we need to throw away. And the uh, letting go of any kind of beingness to God, although I can imagine you saying, God is a being and he's not a being. But um, I would say God is being. And uh, But to, to remove beingness <laughs> from God. Didn't like the voice you chose for me either. <laughs> Keep going. I got, I got a little effeminate. Keep going. I liked it. Listen to my voice. You nailed it. God is that. He's that and he's not that. And it's all okay because it's just things and it is. And was, it just is a love thing that is and it is accepting it. And that's true, but it's also not true. And it's okay because it's true that both things are just everything is all together. I was quoting George Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, please. But, uh, uh, so for me, like going back to the, I am the whole reason I got into this is like, I am enough and you're absolutely right. And I do stick the landing in the book about the illusion of separateness, because that's my illusion of consciousness. Right. But as I seek to find connection, uh, and inspiration, I see God in all things and realize that, yes, I'm having this illusion of separateness, but we're all waves on the same ocean. Yeah. So I'm both things. I am a wave and I'm the ocean. That's right. So, and sometimes the waves crash back in the ocean and sometimes the waves, waves raise back up. And, and so I can have yeah. an individual experience as a wave and I can have a collective experience as an ocean and both things are true. High five. I was going to do a foot five, but I, I felt like that was, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just labored breathing on my part. That was uh, comedy labored breathing. Ooh, get, out. get him out. by Bombas? No. Get it on there. That's a big old foot. Thanks. 12 and a half. Oh, 13 over here, but... Oh, well, you've got a good four inches on me. True. Oh, you meant... That's what she said. Okay. Love it. Remember in the British office? Do you remember what they said in the British office instead of that? Uh, they do say that's what she said, but they also say as the actor said to the bishop. Right. When someone says something right, right, kind right. of naughty, uh, yeah. naughty or, yeah. or I believe homosexual. Okay, okay. If it was like a, a, a gay male, that's what she said, you'd say that's what the actor said to the bishop. Or as the Did actor you said. sterilize said. these foam poofs? No, you're breathing in pure JLD right Who now. Who is the last person on the pod? Actually, it was us. Chris Gethard. I love Wasn't Chris it? Gethard. Oh, Josh Peck. I don't know who that is. Can you say that to Cameron? We'll email it to I don't him. know who Josh Peck is. <laughs> who is he, was a, he was a Disney star, and he's a big YouTuber. And, okay. Uh, he wrote a book called Happy People Are Annoying, which is quite good. Oh, good. Very interesting guy. Sober, too. You'd enjoy him. Nice. Uh, not just because he's sober, but he's articulate. But I love Chris Gethard. I love Chris Gethard. Geth Gethard. Gethard. You know, when Chris did the show, he was on his way to an office signing. Yes, I went to and the he's... office signing with Chris Gethard, and it was very... <laughs> I did. No, I know, but you're really working the get hard, get hard, get hard, get hard. Like your merge is really well done. Um, no no, It was hysterical because no one recognized him and he signed like seven headshots and then he was on social media documenting, walking around the office convention when there was lines of people to see this series regulars yes. to get signatures. And he was just walking and like, and not a single person was like, hey, you were in the... Wow. In the office, and he was. It was really funny. It was really funny. Truly brutes. Truly brutes. I love your ocean wave. Uh, obviously, that's that's an old, not an old. I, I don't mean it like that. I mean like that's a beautiful symbol that. Yeah, I've that's used. A, it's a metaphor that's probably been around for ten thousand years. Yeah, that's it's probably I mean. Vedantic that's, in, that's, in origin. That's yeah. exactly what I mean. And but it's beautiful when we think about. That's sort of what I'm getting at. Is like we add the story. A tall wave. Rain Wilson's life, tall wave. You know what I mean? There's, mm. There he is. Like that video you posted on the plane. This guy's right. watching the office. Mm -hmm. That's a tall wave. You know what I mean? Made mm. the news. Yeah. 
Slow news day. Slow news day. I can't believe they played you know, that that got. It was kind of crazy. On my Instagram, it cut before it got to his screen. So it, I just thought the guy was one of your co-stars. <laughs> Yeah, it it weirdly did that, but I the whole video has me going around and seeing me on the screen. Anyway, I'm surprised you didn't go around and everyone because every time I'm on a plane, it's the it's everyone's watching the office. Also, we all seem to cope with it. Talk about three beer anxiety reduction. I think about this all the time, and again, I can find that compassion for us doing the best we can. Where I'm like, reality is insane. Real this reality is insane. It's so naked. You know what I mean? I could say anything. There could, airplane engine could fall on us. We could have cardiac arrest, mm -hmm. all these different things. And we go back specifically to the office, shows like The Office, which is like Cheers. Cheers was like a place where your friends were. Where office. everybody knows your name. That's lovely. Did you make that up? I'm just making it up right now. And they're always glad you came. Mm -hmm. Said the actor to the bishop. <laughs> Comedy and profundity. Yeah, that's the name of this show. So, Ocean Tall Wave analogy. Yeah. The illusion of the tall wave. Oh, I had something else, but it was about The Office. Oh, remember I was about to say that I feel like watching The Office was everybody's Xanax yeah. during the lockdown in particular, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. has to feel kind of good. I mean, I watched it. It feels really good. I have a yeah. separate reign. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't confuse you. Right. I'm just saying, in fact, that it doesn't even feel strange to be talking to you right now, but there's... Dwight is also in my life. Like yeah. those guys are all in my life. That's beautiful. Can you watch it? Because it's it would be a shame to not the whole country. You know what happens for me when I watch The Office, and this is every going, shot of memory. This is going to be <laughs> close, mm. very close. Put a pin in that. Yeah. This is going to be what's clipped and highlighted from our interview. Can't wait. Do you know what happens to me when I watch The Office? Tell me. Is I go holy. Fuck, I'm 57. I'm almost 60. I don't remember anything about shooting any of that. <laughs> we will shoot. There will be a scene where Dwight is pushing a shopping cart down the stairs and then falls out a window and Creed throws up and like something. It's some big thing. And I'm just like, we shot that? I have no memory of that. I, I I don't remember like what month it was, what year, what season is this? It's crazy how little of 200 episodes over nine seasons that I actually remember. Oh, like, oh, I remember that. What do you remember? What what you're like, I hit so save on little. that. So little. I know, little. I'm with you. I only did three seasons of my show, eight, 24 yeah. episodes. That's barely anything. Yeah. But when I watch it, I'm like, what? They were on it? Or my talk show is yeah. a better example. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were a guest I interviewed on your that? podcast. Yeah. I interviewed Ricky Gervais on yeah. my talk show. Sometimes wow. I'll be in a yeah. bar and there's a basketball game on, and I'm like, I interviewed that guy. Because Nick Bernstein, our producer, had a good nose for who would be a celebrity. So I interviewed a lot of like pre-celebrities. Pre-NBA yeah. guys. Oh, The nice. guy with the unibrow, Kyrie yeah. Flat Earth Irving did yeah. the show. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so what, what did you definitely hit save on? I say think, close your eyes. Let's do it as a meditation. Yeah. You're walking into the set. What day is it? I remember. Uh, Who's there? John Krasinski. <laughs> <laughs> we added the raspberry. I know. I like the Pete Holmes raspberry. <laughs> what if he did a raspberry every time he looked at the camera? <laughs> and no one had a problem with it. <laughs> and just guest no director <laughs> Stephen Merchant was like, that was better. Yeah, that was right. That right. was right. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, I remember me and John in the conference room hanging balloons uh, and... I think it was Mindy taking a nap under the table. And then I remember doing parkour and running around. I remember the parkour cold open. That's a late season. I remember uh, being on the slack line. That was kind of fun. The slack line when yeah. you greased the floor? I don't know. Did this, did that happen? I just remember being on a slack line, shooting on a slack line. What's a slack line? That's where the, you hang up this giant ribbon and you try and balance on it. It was oh. season nine. You probably didn't see No, it. I just yeah. rewatched. Uh, yeah. This is how your experience actually is incredibly in line with our experience because we'll rewatch it and I'll be like, I don't remember this. I remember Scott's Tots. Yeah. Because that episode, you're like, that's like the episode of Succession that recently aired that we were all like, ah! uh, yeah. Scott's Tots is like that. It, it, it's like shaving with a very fine razor. It's, Last night's. Yeah. 
episode of Succession. Did you watch it last yeah. night? The stuff with the marriage of Tom and Shiv, it really hurt me. And yeah. I actually, you know, for me, watching television is kind of part of a business and I also love it. I just, I love television and film and I still, I, when I watch it, I'm 11 years old and I'm eating popcorn and I, yeah. I can, I'm able to turn off that critical voice a lot of the time. Yeah. But it really deeply affected me. It hurt I know me. what you mean. It hurt me in my chest. You realize, okay, without any spoilers, but this season is the season we realize we've actually been had. Oh. Meaning the writers and creators of that show have got us. Yeah. They grabbed our shirts and yeah. they leaned us in for three seasons yeah. only to start not just punching us in the face, like that that's too cheap. Yeah. But we're at their mercy. Yeah. They yeah. can hurt us. Yeah. And I don't just I, mean I said us. last night they can break our hearts. I said last night to my friend Mark, I said there has to be a conversation right now that succession is the greatest television show ever made with this season because yeah. this season is astonishing. It's like they've done seven episodes with seven hours. It's seven hours of the quality of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. I agree. And that is amazing. Can I tell you something hilarious? Yeah. So a friend of mine, um, she won't mind, Ariella. She'll enjoy the name check. My friend Ariella was telling Val, my dead mother, um, she brought her back in a seance. That's a callback if this gets clipped. <laughs> <laughs> Ariella was telling Val, I can't get into the fourth season of Succession. And Val goes, when did you stop watching? And she goes, um, the wedding where they like just went on a boat. And I'm like, where is this going? And I turned it off. And we were like, you can want to keep watching that episode. Like, go ahead and yeah. go ahead and turn it back on, you fucking great A dingus. Cause you <laughs> you left Coachella before yeah. the reincarnated Michael Jackson moonwalked onto the stage. <laughs> like you left at the dumbest part you could possibly leave. Yeah. As an actor, you'll appreciate this. Here's how to act like any character, uh, any of the children on succession. Uh, ask me how the deal is going. Listen, how is the deal going? I don't know. Uh fucking maybe we shouldn't do that. Yeah. So you have to say fucking while you're thinking. Yep. And yeah, at the end. So you go, and they all do it. Yeah. And if you're Roman, you go, I don't know, fucking, fucking we uh, could jizz on a hippo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. They all do. Well, here's like what's it. brilliant about it. Mm -hmm. They're siblings. Yeah. Of course they would talk yeah, the same. siblings do the same thing. And they all got it from their dad. Mm. And when, when I started working with uh, Judd Apatow, we started uh, talking, uh, Val and I noticed um, Judd Gravity that the people closest to Judd, Judd, one of Judd's laughs is this. <laughs> he just bursts like that. Mm -hmm. Started noticing everyone that worked at Apatow laughed like that. Uh -huh. I was like, there's a gravitational pull. So these guys, it's not even a criticism of yeah. succession. Yeah. In fact, it rings true. Yeah. Like the way they all say fuck off and the way they all go. Even Shiv, my impression of Shiv is this. <laughs> She's so expressive. <laughs> tell, tell me, you be Tom yeah. and say, you hurt me more than anyone. Shiv, you have hurt me more than you could ever possibly know. Okay, Tom. Here's what I love. I love, that's good. <laughs> Did it disappoint I love, you? I, it was fun It wasn't to do. as good as this. You this, know where it was, it was too better? much setup. It was too much setup. The, I agree. It was better up here. The, uh, what I love is the way the siblings hug. It's just so great. Oh, I agree. Like if they if they hug, they're like, and they, they're coming in, but then it's like, yeah, it's awkward and it's oh, and it's stiff and it's and they can't it tolerate the Jer touch. Jeremy Irons, Jeremy Strong. Strong, fuck, Jeremy Strong is literally imploding. Season four, his physicality, he's... But then he killed... I love the, I the love writer's that surprise the, yeah. that we're, we're expecting the presentation on Living Plus to bomb. Yeah. Oops, spoiler alert. It's a mild spoiler. I think that's fair game spoiler. Yeah. FGS. And he kills it. Yeah. And he's even surprised at yeah. his ability to do it. Yeah. And he even fields a question about the tweet really well. Uh, we're just two fans talking. We'll have to air this one soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm totally with you. In fact, going back to Judd, that was the main thing he taught me making a show. And as a writer, I think you'll I hopefully find this interesting is that he was like, would, would go like, and then Kendall goes up and of course he eats shit. And then Judd, Judd would always be in the room and he'd go, 
or he kills it. It that was right. that's the voice of the bard. Mm. They're they're going like, or maybe yeah. it works. Yeah, like that. That's that's the voice of surprise. Yeah, of surprise. entertainment is surprise. Yes. So if everyone's going, and it's, of course it's it's prediction, shit. prediction, comfortable prediction, prediction, surprise. Yeah. And that's what success is. Predictable, doing. predictable, predictable, surprise. Even with Shiv and Tom, remember I before for that them fight, to get back together. And they did. And that's the other thing. Why do you want them to get back together? You do, though. I do. And why do you kind of want. I want love in Kendall the world. To... I want more connection in the world. And you kind of want Kendall. I want people to succeed. And you want Kendall to get the company at the end. Yeah. You kind of do. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll see what happens. It's interesting. I'm not trying to force this back to spirit. We can wrap up. You want to go? I got nowhere to go. Oh, I just, I, I didn't know if I was okay. reading. I was looking around. around. Taking a look around. Just want to make sure. We good? This is Shiv. We good? <laughs> I'm not saying too many faces. I'm saying she's easy to read. Malcolm Gladwell <laughs> would say she's incredibly matched. Did you read that book? No. I Which believe one that it? was um, talking to strangers. Oh, yeah. He says oh. all actors are matched, meaning when I'm angry, I'll go. And when I'm happy, it, like it's good. Yeah. You know who's the most matched motherfucker in the world? Oh. Billy Crudup. That dude, you know how that dude feels. Watch him in anything. He's in, he's incredible. I think he's deeply, wow. maybe not it's underrated. the first time Billy Crudup has been mentioned, mentioned on, on a, a podcast. podcast. <laughs> I feel like it's a Crudup-free zone. It's a Crudup-free zone. He's not getting mentioned on podcasts. Yeah. I saw him in a one-man show in New York, and it was unfucking believable It was just him talking for two hours while playing multiple characters. Anyway. More of a brag that I see theater than anything about him. Bring it back to Logan, succession. Angry God, mm. earn it. Mm. You're the sons. It's it's a bad prodigal son. Mm. It's mm. like you've left and I won't take you back. Yeah. And, and for, okay, skip ahead if you haven't seen succession, but like, what are you doing listening to this? Just put on the audio of succession if you're on a road trip. <laughs> like, don't listen to this. <laughs> but, um... <clears throat> Remember, Kendall does the bad thing, and then that's what his father uses to like yeah. coerce love. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. I'll kick you into hell. Mm. He's holding him mm. over hell. There's that Jonathan Edwards talked about he, what a horrible image of God, that God is the hand holding us over a fire, and we're a spider in his hand, and we keep biting him, and he wants to dump us in the fire. Talk about a fucked up, I mean fucked. Wow. But when I watch Succession, I'm watching a show about, I think everything's a show about what do we do with our guilt, the guilt that we exist. Mm. That's your, I'm enough. Yeah. Well, the I, guilt yeah, that I, God I, doesn't I, want us. To me, maybe that's your Christian underwear showing above your waistline. But for me, it's just I the tucked. the Buddhist tradition of life is suffering, which actually in the Pali is dukkha. Life is dukkha and dukkha is chronic dissatisfaction. Yeah. And I relate to that more than like, guilt and sh I've certainly had guilt and certainly had shame, but, um, uh, living, uh, has a cost and it's often, uh, negative and learning, you know, the Buddha says, I teach one thing and one thing only suffering and the end of suffering. And I relate to that because I think humans are wired for dukkha. We're wired for chronic dissatisfaction. I, I wake up and I'm like, Oh, I didn't poop, and why is my coffee cold? And that guy didn't text me back. God damn it! And and I'm 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 frustrated, and things are not enough. And I'm and I think that kept us alive for eons. I think being chronically dissatisfied and feeling like things are just not enough kept us alive in our caves. I you agree. know, we it kept us away from bears in the bushes that wanted to eat us, and it kept enough deer jerky in our caves to keep us alive through the winter. It also kept us out in the caves risking the bears to get the deer jerky. Yeah. Because we were unsatisfied with just berries or whatever it might be. Yeah. yeah. So that so so now we're in the modern world filled with comfort all around me. And there's Starbucks pods over here and I've got a beautiful backpack to hold my stuff and I've got a comfortable cardigan and I had a Starbucks from my app this morning that I, that I just pressed a button and I walk in. They're like, good morning, Rain. Here's your drink and thank you so much. And I think that's because you're famous. That app I'm, does not work very well. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm, I've never used it. I've never used it. <laughs> but um, no, they have the app thing down. The I Starbucks believe it. app, I believe they have it. it down. But you're not the test subject I want. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, I'm a Hollywood elitist. Yes. Um, traipsing around in my Tesla. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But 
uh, how do we live Comfort with non-attachment? And, yeah. Uh, it, how do how do we navigate that? You're saying my guilt of Logan is a little bit Christian uh, fear, and yeah. you're saying you're more dissatisfaction. Well, mm, yeah, I think uh, I, I love and I respect and I really truly love and admire how you've been bringing it back to this father son approval dad. God, forgiveness versus grace, prodigal son thing. And I get that. And that is a Christian mythology. And I, for some reason, my personal mythology goes a little bit more with, you know, with the Buddhism, even though I'm a Baha'i. Bahudist. Um, you're a Bahudist. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. That's brilliant. I come to teach one thing and one thing only suffering and the elimination of suffering. That's it. That's what you said earlier too. It's through. I have to show you that you're suffering. I have to show you that you're insatiable. We t- we say that to our daughter all the time. Baby, want is like a monster. I-, I give her an ice cream and she's like, I want another ice cream. I'm like, I know. We need to learn that there's always another want behind that want. It never stops. So Can the- I just interject one quick thing? In the Baha'i tradition, Abdul Baha, the son of the founder, talks about cream? Um, raising a... Uh, children and says, allow your children to become accustomed to hardship. It's one of the central teachings. Wow. And that's one thing that we've lost culturally. Like, I agree. I don't want to expose my children to any hardship. If when, oh, Val, no. when Val listens to this, she'll be nodding so hard. Yeah. Cause I'm Cause with you. Guess what? Disappointment happens. That's and right. guess what? We always want a second ice cream cone. That's right. And we live in a culture that tells us you can have that second ice cream. And cone. you can, cause there's an app. Yeah. And there's credit if you don't have the money. Yeah. I understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So I, I think, Continue. I just think to, to um, step beside the ego, instead of losing ourselves in it, we have to first ag- acknowledge that we have an ego and that it's insane <laughs> and that its whole system is insane. And then we can extricate ourselves from it and, and uh, awaken as spirit and then live as such. And then kind of Resaddle up to your ego, but no longer identified at it. But I can still be like, "Hi, I'm Pete." Abdul Baha from the Baha'i Faith also says he Green. came. He came to the United States in 1912, and a journalist met him, and he was like, "Oh, here's this Persian prophet." They called him, and they were, and he said, uh, uh, "Do Baha'is believe in Satan?" And Abdul Baha said, "Yes." And he said, "Oh, tell us." What's the Baha'i view of Satan? And Abdul Baha said, Satan is the insistent self. That's it. Yeah. And uh, well done. And I love, I, I just love that, love that too, too, because that's dukkha. Yeah. That's dukkha. That's, that's the chronic that's right. dissatisfaction is my insistent self. That's right. So how do you get out of insistent self? Well, you can address the wants and needs, right? Like you talked about with your daughter mm-hmm. and you can also address the self, which is what we're talking about with the ocean and the waves. Yeah. Because... There isn't a, there isn't a self there is, and there isn't a self. And I can be reminded of that. And I'm like, oh, I'm just an, I'm a wave on the ocean and I'm going to plunge back into the, to the depth and beauty and majesty of all this. That's right. That's right. And the insistence part, I can release my insistence Mm. into, into breath and being. Yes. And to your point earlier that beauty and art and opera and conversation I believe my language would be our reflections of that divine love. Mm. It's as close as we can get in yes. the illusion. Yes. But that means the illusion is a classroom. The illu- we don't need, yes. illusion's too strong. Illusion, it's by the metaphor. way, doesn't it's mean all- it doesn't exist. It has a reality. It's just not what you think it is. Well, in the Native American <laughs> spiritual tradition and Wakantanka from the Lakota Sioux, which means the great mystery, it translates literally as the great mystery, God, which I love that idea. The great mystery. Then you know the great mystery through nature. So how do you, so people mistake, oh, they're they're polytheists because though they're worshiping, they're doing this prayer to the sun and they're doing this prayer to the wind and they're doing this prayer to the snow or whatever. They must worship all these separate things. No, they're all facets and reflections of the eternal. They're all metaphors in the sun we get what? We get heat, but it can also kill you. It's powerful. It's life nourishing. Well, the ocean can it's kill warmth you too, right? in the ocean you yeah. can drown in. And yeah. um, so you have a relationship with all of these beautiful metaphors and they're all ways of understanding right. the one cosmic oneness. And when you realize you are also yeah. one of those metaphors, that Pete is also a character in the dream, mm-hmm. that who uh, Pete isn't dreaming the dream. 
the self is dreaming the dream and Pete is also a character. That also helps me say Pete is enough. That's also why I'm like, you couldn't have done better. We don't have to go back to that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I'm going like, that was enough, Pete, mm -hmm. because Pete isn't where the story ends. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's not even really. The hadith from the, from the uh, prophet Ali, from um, the, the disciple Ali from, from Islam is, you know, life is a dream and when we die, we wake up. Yeah. And uh, Father Boyle quotes that too. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So that's interesting. Going back to that original point, we were talking a little bit about morality and then we'll fuck off. I don't care. What, what time, time is, is it? it? You know why? Not because you sighed, but because I realize we've been going pretty deep and it's, it's you know, there's a great, you're going to love this. I think you're going you're to let this. me use your Wi Fi for my other interviews. Uh -huh. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Katie doesn't live here. It's not like a teacher. That, that dog has been asleep this whole time. You motherfucker. We have been saying the most profound shit, plus <sighs> succession. Look at that. Can we get a camera on this guy? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Can you film him and cut that in? I forget who said it, but someone said on the podcast their feeling about trying to understand God was trying like a dog trying to understand the internet. So those were both of the things that you just I said. I quote you saying, saying that. that. Yeah, okay. I quoted you I, in my book. Book, I think, saying that I might have. Well, it did might, I give you? It might have been me. But in many interviews, I'm like, yeah, Pete Holmes internet. says like a dog oh, trying to understand. That's the internet. beautiful. Yeah. I can't believe I made the rotation. Yeah. What a what yeah. a thrill. You know, man, I was gonna take us into non-duality and the the point of morality is to help us wake up. And I really just want to remember who I am. And it's just too much. Can you tell me the time you laughed really hard in your life? The time you laughed the hardest in your life? And if not, there's other rapid fire questions we can close on. I'll give you some hints. Okay. Maybe someone fell. Maybe someone farted. I know. Maybe someone shit their pants. Oh. I know. Um, How about an office blooper that you just couldn't get through? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I watched you do so one listen, that listen, was unbelievable. I, the, the, office, the office bloopers are great. Um, John Krasinski and I... Um, Hanging the balloons, and it says it is your birthday period when we're in charge of the party planning committee for that episode. <laughs> it's your birthday for, period. And he's like, you couldn't even put an exclamation point? I'm like, well, she didn't cure cancer. And the brown and gray balloons, like, we laughed so <laughs> hard birthday. for so long at that. The set decoration of the room with the balloons just <laughs> hanging brown and gray, just like... <laughs> interspersed like the nothing festive about it whatsoever <laughs> like they had to shut down production they shut it down for like half an hour 45 minutes because we just could not get our shit together and it was that was one of the times I laughed the hardest yeah. it is your birthday period is so funny yeah yeah and like you I can't believe I, I can't remember it specifically yeah. but yeah. I believe you so that was one of the times yeah. yeah that was one of the times truly great yeah have you ever seen the UFO I have not, but gosh, I so believe in UFOs. Have you been listening to High Strange, the podcast? No. Listen to High Strange by my friend Payne Lindsay at Tenderfoot TV. Um, they do all the great podcasts. It's about UFOs all and it them? goes into Roswell and it goes into sightings and with pilots. Like The mass used, sightings are great. When I, was, when I was a kid, did you see the thing on Joe Rogan where the woman, the model filmed a UFO out a plane window? And you see it going by? No. Oh my God, it's incredible. Jamie, can we pull that up? Oh, sorry, I'm not Joe Rogan. Wrong podcast. Wrong podcast. Um, Shit. I so believe in UFOs. Yeah. I, no, and I it used are... to be, when I was growing up, people in the 70s and 80s talked about UFOs. They were tinfoil hats nowadays if you don't believe in ufos and if you don't believe that they're an alien technology you're you're the tinfoil hat wearing cuckoo that's interesting the second part i would have uh, i was surprised by that yeah i feel like they're confirmed by the air force like they've been declassified they have they have dozens and dozens of the most stoic sober 
life yeah, yeah, yeah. life committed military like a guy men who gets his buzz cut refreshed yes. every morning. Yes, I yes. yes. super cuts. I take a number six and then a yes. number nine. And don't you do yes, ten sir. and don't and like, you do five. And you have these guys saying, like, I, I don't it. know what I saw, but I saw twelve tic tac shaped objects. But isn't one of the theories that the twelve tic tac tacs belong to like Russia or something? Isn't that like another they don't how, how you're talking to Russia an, can't even Take. Watch it. Watch it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shows huge in Russia. Can't, they can't take Bakhmut, you yeah, know, of the Ukraine. And they've got Tic Tac technology that can go from here to there instantly. All right. China? <laughs> China. <laughs> All I'm saying is I thought the skeptics were saying, yes, they exist, but they're Earth technology. Because the implications that they're alien technology, that's that's... 10 times as big as just UFOs exist. How they, in in every way, they exceed every technology that And they freshen your exists. breath. And they only have one and a half right. galleries. Yeah. How about this? You ever see a ghost? I thought I saw a ghost when I was a kid and my my house was haunted in- um, What? In Nicaragua. So I lived in Nicaragua as a child and um, I think it's on your list, Nicaragua. It is, Nicaragua. Um, and here's I was a like, funny thing. What does Nica mean? Because agua is water. Here's, here's a funny thing. You don't know. Theo Vaughn's dad is Nicaraguan. Did you know this? No. And he's from Bluefields, Nicaragua, where I lived for three years as a child. Shut the fuck. So I've been texting with Theo, like, we need to go to Bluefields, Nicaragua on a pilgrimage. Yes. Which is another thing in I talk about that you fly. in my book, Soul Boom, Why We Need a Spiritual Revolution. I talk about the concept of sacred pilgrimages. It hit number four on the New York Times. Five. <sighs> Close. Well, after this podcast. Okay. If it had been on this podcast Before. five years ago, it would have absolutely hit That's the right. seller list. That's but. true. So we moved into this incredible Victorian house in Nicaragua and they said uh, to my father, oh, senor, this is really haunted house. And he's like, okay. So we moved in a bunch of little Baha'is here in the late sixties. And um, every night my dad, um, I, I was too young. I was like four. So my, they would hear this <laughs> noise from all over the house. And he's like, what the hell? And then he would notice like things were just a little different. And so my dad took a chalk, a piece of chalk, and put circles around every leg of the furniture around the house. Went to sleep, sure enough, that night, middle of the night. He got up. Every piece of furniture had been moved between two and six inches and had slid. So... What my dad did, what any good Baha'i would do, is he went and he said a bunch of prayers for the dead and the deceased. He didn't know what to do, but he did his own version of like a Baha'i exorcism, I guess, and it just stopped and that was it and never happened again. That's it. I wish I had a better... No. I wish I had a better you, blow you to stop the story. It. You stop it. Yeah. Every part of that. Perfection. Yeah. In fact, this is Brendan Fraser's Oscar for the Whale. Whoa. Yeah. It's yours now. You can do that. Yeah. Kind of stimulating your the tip of your yep. penis with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My prostate. I just fucked myself with Brendan Fraser's Oscar. I just realized that's definitely happened. I'm not trying to be funny. Somebody's Someone has put in that. In fact, the designer of the Oscar statue probably had like, that in mind. People want to get fucked. Yeah, because you're not going to do success. that with the Writers Guild Award. Have you seen what those look like? God help you. They're like a Romulan bird of prey. <laughs> That's how you get the Oscar out. You're like, oh, it's <laughs> it's too deep in. Great, I, I got to win a my Writers Guild Award. <laughs> or, wor or worse, <laughs> I have to win one now. Oh. <laughs> and there is no Writers Guild right now. We're on hold unless it's settled by the time this airs. <laughs> <laughs> Judd, Judd, enough. Huh? Oh, Judd was that a Judd laugh? Yeah. No, his is. <laughs> it was like that. Okay. I don't know why you have to make fun of my laugh. Haven't I done enough for you? That's my Judd impression. <laughs> I feel like we were uh, friends. And uh, any chance you get, you make fun of me. <laughs> That's it. There's a little Adam Sandler in there. Well, I don't know. They're kind of friends, thing. so you can yeah. see in their comedy that oh yeah, the when they're roommates or something yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. So you can see that they both do kind of like a here's, Sandler just does it at ten. Here's the uncoolest thing for any comedy person to do is talk about God. 
And here we are. Here we are. Riding the tanking s- our careers by talking about God and religion and, and spirituality. I'll add to this. We are talking about soul, spirit, life, love, compassion, prodigal son, and peppering it with you get fucked by your Oscar and wedge it out with the Writers Guild Award. I love that. But who is this for? I think it's just us. And everyone listening, you're a special group. We love you. And we do Thank love you. Thank you for participating. And go read Soul Boom. And God damn it, read The Bassoon King. If you're, if you're like, this is too heavy, just alternate between Rain Wilson and books. And Comedy Sex God. I You've mean, probably already you, read that. You can rest both when of those When is your next books. book coming? For Christ's sake. We're on strike right now. Can you write I it, know. please? I'm actually, I, I'm working on a movie that has a uh, spiritual undertone. So oh, that, that's okay. my next venture. I, I, I do want to write another book, but the problem is I'm in a place where my spirituality keeps sort of shifting. So I can't, wow. it's not still enough that right. I can go, I get that's that. how I feel. I'm like, I don't know how much of this is going to stick in three years. Well, I, so I we'll felt see. that way. So when COVID hit, I was like, now's my chance. I know I'm not going to do a whole lot of acting. So COVID let me O'Brien? get all this down. Yeah. Uh, all, everything I kind of know, think, feel, wondered about, delved into around spirituality and vomit all it out, all yeah. of it out. It's like yeah. throwing spiritual spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. So that's what I tried to do in Soul Boom. Well, I'll tell you this. I, Why I, we need a spiritual I read everything revelation. except the last chapter. It's very al dente. A lot of it sticks, Rain. Thanks, Pete. And I'll also say, um, I would never burden you with like, be my friend. But I feel like every time we talk, we have fun. I When you call me for just a quick cue, we end up chatting. 35 minutes. Always love talking to you. Pete, and, and I would, super here's fun. what I would like for you to do. It's like, if I go back and do television, I would like for you to produce the show. Oh, do, my gosh. Because I yeah. really admire you so much. Wait, I, I forgot we mind. talked about that idea. Yeah. Yeah, that comedy I still remember, idea. I still remember my version of it. I don't remember exactly where yours left and mine. Mine was about a fallen, like, could there be a sitcom about a fallen preacher yeah. who's for moral improprieties has been fallen and his daughter moves in with him? Yeah. And she's had her own version of it. So it's you like have these fr- two fallen angels, but gritty, but like in the Roseanne, in a Roseanne or mom setting, I working see. class. See, when you say that now, I understand more clearly why you didn't immediately light up at my pitch. Because my pitch was that you worked at a superstore and the way it's discovered that you you were a former, you're just like the kook yeah. in the superstore. Oh, and it was discovered that and I somebody used finds your my old, old book, book yes. in the bargain bin. I like that though. That is good. There's I know. something in there. There's something in that. It's world. so good. I don't know if we should put it in the podcast. You think someone else will? I think this will be good because the comments will be, they'll go from like, Rain Wilson is a prick for not liking ayahuasca. Fuck you. Yes. And then it'll go from that to like, you guys should totally make that show. I mean, it's on the table. And this is us registering that idea with the Writers Guild. So that's right. Good so, luck. Yeah. Good we'll luck. Sue your asses that. so fast. It'll make your head spin. Fuck yeah. The dog is still asleep. He's been dead for 20 minutes. Okay, if you could make that joke about my He's mom. He's as dead as Val. <laughs> my dead mother. Um, Rainy Wells. Can we cut this into the... Yeah. Into the YouTube version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send that to Joe. Um, <laughs> also, I want to talk to you about doing a Soul Boom podcast, but... I want to do it a little differently, and I want to figure that out because yes. podcast is is a tricky business these days. It's a weird world. Well, now it can it's... also it can also be miraculous. Yeah, if you do it right. So I'm trying to figure that out. And right apparently means be incredibly famous when you start it. I've tried that. No one watches them. Oh, I'm sorry. You thought that was. Well, I'm not incredibly famous. I'm just kidding. Of course, I'm moderately. You are. Well, I'm moderately famous, no, but I did this metaphysical milkshake with Reza. Famous. I was yes no I know I was a guest yes I was just trying to make fun of Jason Bateman and I didn't uh, remember that Will Arnett and those guys oh yeah were murdering yeah. it yeah but it, they're killing it but that's that I actually rescind that they're doing a great job and my bitterness that I just stepped aside and away from is like it's because they're famous it's like oh, come on relax everything's fine yeah they're famous and they're funny that's what I mean and they've hit a sweet spot of. That's I don't I mean. really. I can't there's, a, really... there's a billion super famous people that tried to do podcasts and it didn't work. So it's sure. stupid for me to say yeah. they're famous. That's yeah. stupid. No one listened to, I think, Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen. Did had, they have one? Had, I think they had. Yeah. Really? And it had like a thousand downloads. No That's one wanted it. to listen to Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen talk about the American working man. Like, yawn. That's, That's hilarious. Yeah. 
It's like somebody told me, all you need to know about, it was my agent, Zach Drucker. He goes, all you need to know about the state of television right now is um, Sean Penn and Julia Roberts have a TV show and it's on stars. <laughs> and I, <laughs> he was like, that's all you need to know. Yeah. Everyone's sold up. Yep. It's yep. hard to get a show on. You have to be Julia Roberts and Sean Penn. Yeah. Well, we'll keep talking and please, I'll, I'll lend my, or maybe Kendall does a great job to your show any day. Uh, fucking, you know, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, um, Rain, we could do a show about you being a pester. Fucking people love it. Yeah? I mean. Let's let, let's end on that. You have to say keep it crispy. Keep it crispy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you 